Oh, sorry, miles away. Anthony here for D News, and I have always had what people call a problem with daydreaming. I probably spent about 60% of my time in school as a kid just off somewhere, which actually is not too terrible. It's been estimated that we spend about a third to a half of our lives daydreaming. And I was always chastised for it because the standard thinking is that it shows a lack of focus and respect and work ethic. But now new research from the Max Planck Institute confirms a theory that's been around for a while. Daydreaming is not idleness. It's a healthy sort of cat-like readiness. See, your brain's got about 20 different networks that can be firing on all cylinders, but not at once. There's a kind of competition up there, and if one network is taking command, the others take a back seat. And that's why multitasking isn't actually multitasking. And if you want to know more about that, Trace just did a great video on it. Anyway, the network that controls daydreaming is called the default network, and it comes into play when nothing is happening that your brain considers important. The main bits of it include your medial prefrontal cortex, your posterior cingulated cortex, and the temporal parietal junction. Now these are areas that handle big important things like planning and personality and processing information and with all of their executive powers combined they make you zone out during your drive home and imagine that you are a werewolf. Admittedly that does not sound useful. Also constantly imagining being a werewolf might just be a me thing. Unimportant here does not mean that the activity is useless, by the way. Your teacher's presentation is useful. Driving home safely is useful. But you don't really need all of your brain power for it. You've driven home a million times. You can do it without total focus. But your brain is not a lazy place. It doesn't like to be idle. So if another network isn't needed, it switches to the default network. As silly as my werewolf dreams may sound, my friends, daydreaming, imagination, and self-referential thought are incredibly complex tasks. It's sort of a mental training exercise. It could also serve a similar purpose to the dreams we have at night, helping us process information, figuring things out. Sort of a spring cleaning. We may not be focusing on something immediately important, like your teacher's presentation, but it could be important for long-term goal planning and learning. And you know, you need downtime. Just like you can't always be running at full speed, you can't always be working at your top mental capacity. If you're getting stressed, flustered, or unproductive, switching into default mode can help you lower your stress levels, organize all the input being thrown at you and help you come back to clarity and efficiency. Have you ever snapped out of a daydream with an answer to a problem that was really bugging you? There you go. And the nice thing about the default network is that it allows for easy override. The second something important happens, like an unexpected red light or a teacher calling your name, it immediately surrenders control back to the important stuff. So the next time someone calls you lazy for daydreaming, you just let them know that you are defragged, organized, and three steps ahead of them. And also that you thirst for blood during the full moon. Once again, maybe just a me thing. What is your most common daydream? Let me know down below and subscribe for more D News.